Hello, and welcome to this video. We're going to take a look today at conducting a synod on synodality listening session for your parish, or if you're doing it for a particular ministry or a particular organization or movement in the archdiocese. So we hope that this will be very informative for you and uh, will help you get through your sessions. So my name is Sister Donna Ciangio and I'm a co-coordinator of the Synod on Synodality. And many of you have probably seen our workshops. Melissa and I did about 12 or more workshops around the archdiocese. And uh, hopefully all of this has been very helpful to you. So I'd like to look at the goals of the listening session. So it, it's simple, it's quick. Um, wait, Melissa, I just made a mistake. <laughs> so I'd like to look at the goals of the listening session. and. The first one is really to engage as many people in conversation. And the conversation is around, what is the Holy Spirit asking of the church of the 21st century? So this is really Pope Francis's goal, to have people all around the world, in our parishes, in our small groups, to really think about this question. And the question is really, it's not just a question that you talk about off the top of your head. It's a question that really calls for prayer. It calls for listening and discernment. And then it calls for discussion with other people. So it's the engagement in the conversation that Pope Francis is looking for. And the second part of that is that we're really trying to look at what are the needs of the church today. We know that, you know, we have complaints about people not coming to the church, people have left the church, and all of those kinds of things that we talk about all the time. So Pope Francis is really hoping that, you know, by putting all our heads, our prayers, our minds, our hearts together, that we can really come up with the ways that the gospel can best be proclaimed today, that people really hear it, and that they come to Christ through the efforts of the church today. So it's a very important thing that we're doing in these listening sessions. So the process is really simple. All right, and it's, you see here, I have three, three things in red. First is to listen, all right, to listen to each other, to listen to, as Lumen Gentium says, the joys, the hopes, the sorrows, the anxieties of the people of this age. So it's our age that we want to listen about. What are people hearing or not hearing or need to hear? And then to dialogue about that. We already know that some of the parishes um, are doing some listening sessions, and the dialogue has been very fruitful, that people are actually spending time talking to each other, and they're not just complaining about the church. That's not what this is about. It's really to put our heads together, as I said before, and to figure out what God is asking of us today. And the third part is discernment. Now, discernment's a big word, but discernment means that after we listen, after we dialogue, after we prayerfully consider what we heard, that we discern what the Holy Spirit is asking of us. It's not something that we're really used to, but it's a really good practice. So it's then spending time in hearing what we feel the call is. So it's a simple process. Again, listen, dialogue, discern. So in order to prepare for the session, we've get, gotten a lot of questions about this. So first of all, at the session, you're going to need three types of people to run the sessions. One, you might have a facilitator or co-facilitators. We'll talk about that in a minute. You will have people called table facilitators, and we're also asking you to have table scribes. So let me just go through this and then we'll get to the nitty gritty about it. You want to ask people who have been doing some kind of facilitating before or can run a meeting uh, to help you at your table. So you want to meet with them before the session. So you could meet with them ahead or you can meet with them about 30 minutes before the session, just to brief them on what it is that they need to do. And I'm gonna brief you on that in a second. The other thing is that we found that if you send the materials ahead of time, 
to those who you're registering. All right, we're gonna ask people to really register for the session because you need to do planning. So registering, it's not just, a, you'll have some walk-ins, all right? But it's not just uh, having everybody, okay, here comes everybody, whatever. It's good to have some people register ahead of time. This way they can get the material the listening session material ahead of time, or at least the questions, so that they can take some time to prepare. How do you invite people to come? This is a big question that we were asked around the archdiocese. And the first thing I can say to you are these two words, personal invitation, all right? Personal invitation. You need to prepare some publicity. Now, I know that some uh, parishes, they've done some bulletin ads. Not everybody reads the bulletin or has access to it. They'll put stuff on their uh, website, their uh, social ministry pages, whatever it is. And some have even taken to doing some newspaper ads. Again, whatever you do with that, you're going to ask people to sign up to be part of something. And there's so many easy ways now to sign people up electronically. Then you might invite participants, all right? Now you can invite certain groups in your parish, but mainly you wanna be able to reach out to people who have not been coming, all right? So I always call those a one-on-one. -on -one. You speak to people personally, invite them to come, tell them what it's all about. Hey, Pope Francis is asking us all to come together to talk about the church today, and we'd love to have your input. We know you're not here, but we'd love to have your input. So it's that kind of, a, a, of invitation, I think, that has to be looked at. You want to reach out to those who you know are not part of the parish or ministry anymore. Now, people are asking, how do you do that? Well, first of all, if you have a baptism program, if you have newly married folks, if you have newly engaged folks, you know, we have all kinds of ways in our parishes that we're doing outreach and evangelization. So you want to ask those people. I know um, in the parish that I was working in, we would specifically ask our, our new people, our RCIA people, people who have already come through the process of initiation, we would ask them personally to be involved. And I'll tell you, it was overwhelming all the time. As long as we were asking, they would come. Um, you might ask people in your neighborhood who you know are Catholic or were Catholic, but aren't coming anymore. And, you know, talking over the fence or uh, talking to somebody in your apartment building, whatever it is, just say, hey, look, we're doing this in the parish. We really need your input. Would you like to come? You might also check parish registers um, to find out, you know, a lot of us are not doing too well keeping up our databases. Other parishes are doing very well with that but you might wanna scroll through the database and see who it is that you can call. A friendly phone call is great. A personal letter is great. A postcard is great. Anything that you can do to personally reach out. So the last thing on the slide I have here is be creative and brave. You know, you're not asking them to come back to church for the rest of your life. You're asking them to come and give input on why they're not there. And we want to hear that. We want to hear what people's experience is and what has um, caused them not to be involved anymore. So personal invitation is your key way of inviting people. So again, register people ahead of time, All right, You can do that. You will have some walk-ins, that's fine. Um, but again, send the uh, materials and I know one parish is just sending the questions, that's fine, but at least people have an idea of what they're going to come to, what they're being asked to do. And I think you'll get really a lot out of, uh, out of that by doing that kind of uh, inviting and sending the materials ahead of time. And then uh, make sure that when people come in, you have a welcome committee, all right? People who are, hi, welcome, nice to have you. Sign them in, give them a name tag, uh, maybe pens and paper on the table, all those kinds of things so that you're setting up a welcome environment. I think that's always good. It's always good to have candy on the table too. People like that. So preparing for the session. 
So again, your room is going to be key. You want to make the room look nice, right? And we're suggesting that you set up tables. If they can be round, that would be great. If they can't be round, that's okay, all right? But I think people need something to write on, so better to have a table than not. We're suggesting five or six around a table, including the scribe and the table facilitator, all right? We think that's important because we want people to have the opportunity to do the listen, the dialogue, and the discernment. And also, the questions are rather broad. We try to, you know, make them a little bit more focused, but it, once people get started talking, they're going to really want to continue. So um, the better to have a smaller group than a larger group at a table. So again, on the table, you wanna make sure that you have pens, the questions. Um, we have a couple of other things for the scribe uh, to write on and capture people's ideas. And also some of this can be pro projected on a PowerPoint. And so I have those uh, slides at the end of this presentation. It's also important to make the room look nice and have a liturgical focus in the front of the room. So I think most of these uh, will be done pre-Lent, but you want to set up looking for ordinary time, have some flowers, some seasonal flowers, maybe scripture, you know, different things on the tables just to make it look nice. You might even want to, depending on your tables, um, have a tablecloth and something on the tables, but make, may, have, maybe have an environment committee that could really help you with that. Okay, so facilitating the session. All right, so I mentioned these three in the beginning of the presentation. You have a main facilitator or co-facilitator. So they're basically going to run the session and keep it moving. All right. So that's they're going to be uh, introducing things as well as keeping time. They're going to make sure that they give you some heads up on time. Again, if you have people who are used to this kind of facilitation, that would be really helpful. Again, we're asking our parish pastoral councils to take the lead on this uh, in the best way that they can. Then at your table, you wanna have a small group facilitator or table facilitator. And their main role is to keep on topic and keep the discussion moving. So we don't want tables to get bogged down. We want people to express their ideas and their experience but a facilitator just makes sure that everybody has the opportunity to share. So there'll be another video just for facilitator, uh, table facilitators that can help some of that. At the table, you also need a table scribe, right? And that's a fancy word for reporter. And that person is going to take notes, right? They have to have um, understand what the topics are that people are talking about. And then eventually they're going to give to the Synod Coordinating Committee in the parish. And then that committee is going to send it to here to the archdiocese. All right. So again, you know, you're going to provide a little training on what you uh, want them to do. And again, hopefully we'll have a video on table scribe as well. Inviting facilitators. So the idea with, with the uh, facilitators is that the role of facilitator means to make it easy. So we want to make it easy for people to be able to share. And the facilitator is going to have to lead people in that. All right. So maybe the facilitator, first of all, I want to say the facilitator shouldn't be a dominator, right? Shouldn't dominate the whole conversation. However, the facilitator and the table scribe are also participants in this process, right? They're not just there to facilitate, but they're facilitating and also speaking, taking uh, place at the same time with everybody else. So the facilitator, may want, you want to know that the facilitators um, have some, uh, some experience with facilitating at a table. So you want to look for certain qualities in them. So I've listed a few here. First creates the welcome and prayerful atmosphere so that when people sit down, there's a smile. 
Hi, welcome to our table. We're so happy to have you. Just a little, little kind of intro. Leads a group without dominating, as I said. So that might, might mean that the facilitator might start off a question. All right, so you can keep in your mind that the facilitator can start with, hey, I was thinking about this and here's what I thought. What do you think? So you pass it around like that. And then also has the ability to draw out others, all right? And that's important because I think one of the guidelines for the um, listening session is that everybody has a right to speak, but everybody has to speak, all right? So sometimes you have a shy person in a face sharing group. You don't wanna say, gee, uh, Jean, what do you think about that? So that wouldn't be appropriate in a face sharing group. But in this type of a group, where we're there for a task, as well as prayer and discernment and all of that, you want to be able to have, make sure that everybody speaks. So a facilitator might gently call on someone. Um, you want to keep people on the topic. So if people kind of get off on something, you might say, gee, that's really interesting. Um, what does anybody else think about that? So setting some ground rules ahead of time in the facilitator video, we'll have that for you in the facilitator workbook that's up on our uh, Synod page, you'll find all of those kinds of techniques listed. We've really worked hard on that to make it simple for you. And the other thing is the, uh, the facilitator wants to be concerned about everybody who's at the table and is trying to create community. I don't know about you, but I found a million times when I've gone to uh, a workshop or a convention or a conference, I have to tell you, I'm always a little shy. But once we get started at the table, suddenly we have a bond that really pulls people together. And I think, again, this can do a lot for your parish, for your ministry, for your organization, etc. So if you want to look at this whole listening se session process, it's almost an outreach or an evangelization tool. And I, I found that to be so true with everything that, uh, every kind of conference that I've ever been at. All right, your table scribes, all right? So the table scribe has to be a good listener. You hope that the table scribe is uh, kind of used to being a, a secretary at a meeting, organized and clear and they can synthesize the main ideas from the table discussion. So you don't want somebody who's writing down everything that everybody said and saying, Joe said this. It's not that kind of, of, a, of, of a, a transcription, okay? What it is, is it's kind of listening, jotting down the key words or key concepts. And then at the end, what I would do is have everybody at the table say, okay, around this particular question that Pope Francis has asked us, what are three things that we're hearing? All right, and then let everybody kind of give you the answer to that for the table scribe. I th think that's the best way to go about it. That's uh, what I, my experience has been when I've taken notes at a meeting. All right, so again, uh, we hope to have a video for you on the table scribe, just give you an idea. And we've also prepared uh, a sheet, a worksheet at the table for the scribes to work with. All right, so that will be also up on our website under listening session. So what's the listening session look like again? You'll remember this from the info sessions, I'm sure. So again, I've put times here, um, but some parishes are doing a little shortened version. Some people are doing a little longer version. The idea here is we've provided the text for you, but you might adapt it to the way that works best for your parish. All right, so generally you'll have a welcome by your pastor, or if you're doing this in the context of a ministry, by the ministry leader, all right? And then the table facilitator will have, um, or the main facilitator will have the table facilitators uh, have everybody in the in the group do an introduction at their table so they we know who they are and they can say what their experience has been with the parish or the ministry. And then we're suggesting maybe an opening song. Not everybody uh, feels that they want to do an opening song. That's fine. But something like All Are Welcome 
is a good song or might be a Holy Spirit song. And then what we've done here is we've given you um, prayer service, starting with Come Holy Spirit, all right, our traditional Holy Spirit prayer. We've added uh, from the Acts of the Apostles. In this one, I have the short form of Pentecost. Again, getting people to listen and to pray with that. We've asked uh, scripture reflection questions. Again, you can adapt this to whatever your needs are. Two, one, a personal experience and also a larger experience. So how have I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in my life? And in what ways do I see the Holy Spirit working in my parish? So again, there'll be interesting questions for people. They're almost like icebreakers and getting people to really share a little bit deeper, more deeply on their experience. And then a little closing prayer there. Then we move into the listening session process. So there's a video by Cardinal Tobin, which we like. It's three minutes and I think 58 seconds. And it really captures what the Synod on Synodality is. And then there'll be an explanation of the process by the main facilitators. So at the end of this, you'll see we have PowerPoint slides and even the Cardinal's, um, his address is embedded in that. All you have to do is click on it. So explanation of the process. What's the goals? Here's a general introduction to the process. You might say something about dialogue and discernment, and then something about group etiquette for table discussion. That's really important. So just reiterating, uh, you know, what we're supposed to do at the table. And then at the table, you'd have the introduction of the table facilitator and scribe. Here's who they are. Here's what they're doing. And then at the very end, you might give a little bit of feedback, but you can hold that off for a minute. So then each person at the table introduces himself or herself. All right. So it kind of just gives a general opening to the process. And then we have, um, you know, a quote from the Cardinal. And as we begin our listening and sharing, all are invited to consider what the Holy Spirit is calling us to what paths are being opened, and what our inner spiritual movements are. Sadness, joy, confidence, anxiety, hope or no hope or other. So we might want to say that with people. Then there's a table process to help the participants focus. So you, the facilitator, general facilitator, is going to ask everyone to reflect silently for a few minutes. All right, preparing their thoughts on each question. And then stating that each person can actually share his or her ideas for no more than three minutes. Actually, three minutes is a long period of time when you're trying to get everybody talking together. So, um, you know, you can just say, we'd like to hear, give, give us a thought or two on these particular questions. And then it, this is important. This is where the discernment comes in to reflect silently again, and then taking a few minutes to say, "What enlightened you? What what, it, what have you heard, or what's resonated with you? What are some things here that seem to be maybe what the Holy Spirit is calling us to?" So here are your core questions or your fundamental questions. We're saying approximately 45 minutes, maybe 30 to 45 minutes, because this is a lot of questions. So the main question is, this is Pope's question, how is this journeying together happening today in your parish community? Or if you're a campus ministry doing this, university, youth group, whatever, all right, we just put them all in there. All right, so the journeying together is really about how, how are we all together? How are we walking together in this? And what might be challenging for you? So what are the things that really work? And what are some challenges that we're facing? So we asked just a couple of questions here. These are starter questions. You don't have to answer every one of these questions, but this is like suggesting what we're really asking in terms of these particular questions. The third bullet point here is really important too, because Pope has asked us to reach out to other people. People have left the church 
as well as to other people. And it's really important for us to really think about how are we actually doing that? So continuing from core question one, again, what prevents us from walking together? You know, what are your experience? What hinders you from being part of the parish? You know, um, why have you left? What are some of the things that you would like to say about that? And then again, the Pope asks us to reach out to other people. So for example, do we as a parish reach out collectively or individually to those who are no longer participating? Maybe you don't even know about that, but that might be something to talk about, what helps or hinders us. What are some ways to find out why they're not participating? And it's not a matter of uh, you know being nosy about it. It's really trying to say, look, we're trying to see how we can help renew the church, renew our parish. So it's really important for us to hear from you. And then the third one, and I, I just always think this is so important for parishes to think about. What do we have to offer and attract people who are not participating? What do we have to offer? It's a question that most most uh, groups that I know, most parishes I know, are not really asking that question. You know, instead we're saying people should come, they should do this, but we're not asking how are we projecting the beauty that we have, the faith that we have, the experience that we have in reaching out to others in our parishes. So again, for question one, we'll say as a result of our discussion, what are three steps we can take in our parish to grow in walking together. And where in these experiences, these shared experiences, do you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? So that's the kind of uh, synthesis that you want to get from your table. Core question or fundamental question two, again, approximately 30 minutes or so. Again, how are we walking together as a church and what steps is the Holy Spirit inviting us to to grow in our journey together. So question, by our deep listening today, what actions do you hear the Holy Spirit asking our parish and the universal church to take? So there's parish and then universal church. And then a very important question that the Pope is asking, what practical steps are needed to include people in the areas of leadership, governance, and inclusion in the universal church. So he's asking a very big question here. Again, that's going to take listening, dialogue, and discernment. And then we asked local question because we feel that's very important. How are we walking together as a church and what steps does the Holy Spirit invite us to grow, to take, to grow in our journey together? So question is, how can the Archdiocese of Newark support you in your local parish? What are three steps we can take in our archdiocese to grow more collaboratively for the future? And then at the end, if there's time, okay, you can take feedback from a few groups. Um, I don't know what your experience is, but my experience generally is if you have 20 groups in the room, it's kind of deadly to get feedback from everybody. So the main facilitators might kind of hovel around, uh, hover around the room and to um, hear from a few tables and just call on maybe three tables just to give a little feedback of what they're hearing on one or two of those questions. And then at the end, if you have time again, how has the discussion given you the opportunity to listen and express and share your own experience of the parish and the universal church? And what's one hope you have for the church as we continue to grow and listen to the Holy Spirit? All right, so that's kind of like your wrap up. Sometimes you can ask what's a word you wanna share at the table, one word of hope, et cetera. So there's different ways of doing that, but the idea is to have that as a wrap up. And then we have a sending prayer. Again, take a moment of quiet as we reflect on what we've done in our gathering. And then the prayer, a little bit from St. James, and then let us go forth sharing a sign of peace. Now, some people have asked with the rise of the uh, COVID and the, vari the variants of COVID, can we do this online? 
yes. You can do it through Zoom. You can do it uh, through Zoom with breakout groups. That works really well. Uh, we've done that a number of times for different kinds of groups that we have. And uh, found that we did it the other day uh, with the USCCB, the Bishops' Conference, and I believe that there was something like I think over 180 people, and we were put into breakout groups. So I know that in my group we had five people, and we had a fabulous sharing. We were listening to what other dioceses were talking about, etc. So it's very possible to do this uh, with some people. Uh, with everybody, depend, again, depending on what's happening with the virus, um, it's very simple to do this on Zoom. All right, so I hope that's helpful for you as well. So the other thing here is there's a few slides here for the listening sessions. So you'll be able to download this presentation and the slides, right? They'll be up under listening sessions on the Synod pages of our website. And you can change it around, you can change the times, whatever it is that you need to do. But we've at least given you kind of like a basic uh, PowerPoint. So here would be one, you might have this uh, up as people come into, into the space or if they're coming into a Zoom meeting and you can easily print your parish name there. All right, or how, whatever you wanna put on that slide. And then the dialogue and discernment. So this is for the main facilitators to do just to explain this. Again, not a forever kind of explanation, just a kind of a simple one. A pro the listening session process. All right, again, if you need to adapt this, you can adapt it. Um, here's Cardinal's Tobin, uh, Ca Cardinal Tobin's message. So all you have to do is hit this twice. Dear brothers and sisters in and Christ, you have to just make sure if you're doing you, Zoom from God that you our put Father up and the, um, there's a little thing that says sound, all right, so that everybody can hear that. But in your room, everybody will be able to hear that. Here's your core questions. Again, if you want to shorten these, change these, but keep the main core question that the Pope is asking us. Core question, again, just as I showed you on the slides. Core question two, local questions, and then if there's time, you can take that if there is time off. Feedback from the groups and your sending prayer. So again, we've tried to make it simple for you to be able to put that up and then a thank you for coming. So again, I hope these are helpful for you and you'll be able to adapt them as you can. If you need if you have questions or you need anything, please feel free to call Melissa or myself, and we're always available to help. I think that um, on some of the other materials that we've given out, we have our, our emails and so forth, but feel free to reach out, and hopefully this will be very helpful for you. And please uh, remember to let us know when you're having your listening sessions and what type of listening session it will be. And again, there'll be a form up on the website and a form sent directly to you to help us just know who is doing what, when, and where. All right, so that'll be really helpful to us. So thank you very much for listening. And again, have a great listening session to listen, dialogue, and discern.